Who's going? Oh, oh, oh! Bruh! <laughs> All right, guys, this is Shadow. He lives out in the Big Island somewhere, and, uh, you know, we always have fun little inside uh, uh, word jokes here, kind of that pigeon style stuff that we got going back and forth. Shadow wants to hear a band. Oh, Mr. Bungle! Ooh, ah, uh, guys, you guys know Mr. Bungle, right? Who doesn't know Mr. Bungle? If you know Mr. Bungle, you know, you're still here. Let me go ahead and get, uh, oops. Get here. Get some Mr. Bungle. Bungle, not Bungo. Gosh, stand by. A lot of folks here, I must do scroll through. Here we go, Shadow. Merry Go Bye Bye is the name of the track. So let's do Merry Go Bye Bye. You guys ready for that? Merry Go Bye Bye? Okay. So here we go. Mr. Bungle in the jungle. And it's Merry Go Bye Bye. Let's go. The shining searchlights in the sky. Oops. There's a new god in the side. This and the map is not the tent. I broke my telescope. But that's the nature of Oh, Beach Boys vibe, yeah, guys. Have to play. Bring back the pain of a god that's never blue. You're in control of the whole damn universe. With a little bit of some old uh, sprinkles of Beatles. Bring back the pain. about this is this is not sequenced or quantized it's all live playing i love it okay i was all right all right here we go Brother Steam and Metal, like psychedelic. With a brown note. <laughs> Almost got like some video game escapades in there. Yep. My brain hurts. We're already halfway through the track. Shadow, their genre is yes. Rodimate is 
Okay, I gotta stop this here only because when they lean into this harder, darker, heavy metal, you know, uh, section, to me what's a brilliant aspect about this is that we're used to hearing a lot of this, you know, in the more, you know, last 15 years, let's just say, just the recording of it, the intensity, the recording, the cleanliness of it and stuff like this. This is, this to me sounds like how metal was originally soulfully, viscerally meant to sound before it got a little more processed. It's not a ding to, to good engineering. It's not a ding to, you know, cleaner drum sounds, great compression and tones on guitars so you can, you know, emphasize a different kind of power. But this is like, guys, set up in the garage. We got 300 people coming over right now in Quaaludes and go, you know, at, at least in the 70s. Those were the kind of parties we had. Anyhow, that's, that's what this reminds me. That's why I love, love, love this section here. And I think I'll try to make it to all that I'm so Yeah, you're right. Every Mike Patton wor is worthy. Um, Mike Patton job is worthy gig music. Ink him up. That was funny. Very interesting crossover. Man. like we walk through a greased uh, a cheese grater and at the other end it reassembles itself to something really nice like this it's hilarious what a great track bring back the shame of a man for a few get on your knees cuz i'll be Shadow, God, thank you, man. That was really crazy. You know what? I, the, the the thing that made this like a whole trip for me was the fact that at a piece of music like this, you have to allow your brain to fill in uh, the blank spaces through theater of the mind. Like you, you attribute an arrangement, a part of a song or an arrangement, into your head, and what does that what does that yield? During the heavy, intense craziness, it could have been like you know shattering glass of some sorts, whatever it is you think of your head. For me, it was like. This song was like, here's a cheese grater. You know, one of those four things back in the old days, 1900s and earlier cheese grater. And the song started and started to push through this grease, the, this cheese grater and got really super chaotic. And then it all came out on the other end and all of a sudden it reassembled itself into what we just l heard in the last minute. And that's a whole complete like musical journey. So obviously not a song that they worked on and say, hey, this will work good on the radio. You know what I mean? This is more like, well, it's, it's like what Mike Patton has always done, I believe, which is like, no, 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 no. I follow the school of like Mike, more like Frank Zappa. I write music that I love to write, and I'm not worried about chasing, you know, uh, getting on a, a radio play, you know? So you build that kind of um, unique um, underground following, which, you know, Mike Patton has done, and also uh, Les Claypool and... And artists that really push those kind of envelopes, you know, and that's what this was all about for me, I think, you know, really, maybe, did I say that right? I don't know.
Hi, in Digital Wave. What's going on? So, yeah, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <coughs> by the way, Doc Doom, I wanted to say hi. I just, I'm looking through some things here, and I realized uh, you dropped by to say hi. Also, ink them up. What's going on? Seeing you dropping by here. All right, guys, let's do some more cheese. <laughs> Copy the dark blue one. No, wait, refresh data. Okay, there we go. Copy the blue one. Let's go back to a wheel spin here. And uh, let me clear shadow real quick. And let's go ahead and... Oh, my God. Look at how many slivers of cheese there are, guys. Man, oh, mighty. Is that how many people are actually here on the stream, too? I can't tell how many people are, are on the stream. Hey, Zagurg, how are you? And Magic Sparks, too. What's going on? <clears throat> and patty cakes, of course. All right, here we go. If, it, if anything... Uh, let's, let's, uh, speen for your color. All right. Ooh, the wheel was freaking out a little bit there. What do we got? Crossface Buffalo, Team Red. Okay, Crossface. Let's go. Let me look up your, uh, stuffs here. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, see, see. Mm-hmm. Let's start off this way. Crossface Buffalo. Ooh, we're doing a game. Our first game of the evening. Zero Wing OST. Uh, are you, is anybody here familiar with that game? I think I've done one or two from that. I'm not too sure. Uh, but let's see what we got here. Zero, zero Wing OST. And this is the introduction. So, uh, which I guess maybe that means it was um, crossface. Is this when you say the introduction, are you saying it's like the opening theme or the, when the game starts, it's that bit of music in the beginning? Something like that? Vodka Man 666, how's it? Okay. Don't know if we've done that? Okay. Oh, crap. You know what? Oh, man. I just put all this on my clipboard. Hey, um, who, one of my mods who can, can you grab the link by chance? Uh, of the track. Oh, you can't. That's right. I'm going to have to do this again. Okay, wait a second. I can recover. Wait a minute. I'm going to grab the link. Here we go. Here's the link of the Mr. Bungle track. Woohoo. 1 a.m. Is, is on tonight. 1 a.m. What's up? There we go. There's the link for the Mr. Bungle. Now I can go ahead and copy this and we can do this, uh, our very first uh, video game for the evening, courtesy of Crossface Buffalo Wing. Let's do this. All right. Oops. <laughs> Baseline. And it's all feels it's like drums are like rumbling through a saturator. It's all distorted. Nice. metal vibe to it. a short one so even though whoops woohoo 
I liked it. I liked it so much I started to play it again. Um, that bottom line bass, that galloping ding 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 There are so many metal bands that actually use that gallop, you know, to really get you pumped up into the power of a track. Um, but then again, it was also used uh, in like movies, kind of synthy scores. But the classic thing for me was the overfry of the drums, the purposeful overfry of the drums. I thought was really cool. Chord changes were your typical dun 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 kind of a, a vibe. Uh, but the synth sounds also good. I'm trying to remember what synth that would have possibly been, like a Prophet VS or something, one of those old sequential circuits. But I know for everybody who's a gamer, that must have meant a lot. So Crossface Buffalo Wing, thank you so much for coming and hanging out there. Yeah, there it is, 1 a.m. bus. Thank you very much. That was the z was it? That was Zero Wing OST. There's the link right there. All right, how about some more cheese, guys? I cheese. Refresh all data. Mm. I'm going to do this probably for about another half hour, Wheel of Cheese, take a short break, and then I'm just going to be doing all the boosts from there. So sorry, that was gross. That was a paleo sausage. It just kind of, little, little hitchhiker up on that one. Sorry. <laughs> all right, let me copy this. Let's go to my uh, spin. Yeah, Mario had too much pizza. Let me see if I can remember the melody. Did I get it? Was that close? I thought I did. I thought it was pretty close. <laughs> I can't remember. I had probably I hadn't listened to it. It's like like I was high as Frank's back in 1980. When was that? 87 or 88? That was the last time I probably heard it. And that's the that's not the theme, right? That's the the music that while you play. I think that's why it's so so heavily embedded in my brain. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get ready for some uh, cheese bean. <clears throat> we are officially refreshed. Oh my God, the cheese bean is getting so thin. Many many slices. All right, guys, vote for your color. If anything at all, let's do this. All right. Who's coming? Uh oh. Uh oh, 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 it's Jericho, almost you, it's Mr. Persona Man, 13, 13, that would be the team yellow, let's go ahead and uh, let's see what we got going on with Mr. Persona Man, stand by, you gotta, oops, let me do it this way, oops, how did that happen, wait a second, something just went weird on me, stand by, Oh no, it was my bad. I went weird on me because I'm kind of short bus that way. Okay, this is the band. A band is called OTT, or is it OTT? I don't know if that's an acronym for something. It ought to be good. <laughs> Sorry. Dun -dun 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 I know, I, I wish I would have had that for my bad joke. <laughs> okay, hang on for a second. This is OTT. Uh, Mr. Persona Man, where are you? Right there. Okay. It's called the Queen of All Things. So let's do that. All right. And I got to delete that. <sighs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, before I do, I have one. I have another bad dad joke. Okay, ready guys? Hang on to your heads before I before I put this up. Let me I'll just so I can I know what I'm doing. I'll get I'll get it going. So here's the bad bad joke. Ready? Bad dad joke. Um, what did the buffalo say to his kid when he left him? Bison.
Good, some live music. Let's go. I have been banned. Well, I like what the bird sounds. This must be kind of like a nice uh, ethereal presentation. I love the swimminess of that Rhodes piano. Got like a little phase, hit, or is it? Can't tell if there's a guitar over the top of it with a phase shifter. Wow, super nice. It says it's live. Wow, that was really nice, that little mini move. Lay over that boat, that boat quarter. that guy's thinking. There's kind of this sensual vibe to it, you know? It just really kind of pulls into here. Very sativa. If you know, you know. Ooh, that bass. was in that turnaround was great. Thanks, Nick. Guys, what would be the name of this genre? Is this Psytrance? Yeah. Ah, oh, God, I love that. How they blew us into this, like, live drum.
Everybody's having the best time of their life there. Check that out. God, that blend with the live drums and everything else is so sick. such a wonderful interval there. I love that environment. You got artists working there and stuff. I've never seen anything like that. And the use of auto-tune in the right way is such a badass effect. Ooh, that bass. Oh, I just got chicken skin on that base. <laughs> Sorry, backed away from the mic. That was great. I loved every second of that. Every second of that. Like, I could go ahead and hit that, listen to it a few times, just over and over and over again. And I think that's what the magic of that kind of music can do, is that it just settles you into a groove. It's really, I've never seen anything like this where they have the artists, or people are painting or doing crafts on, you know, just around the side. It, it's, it's like... Um, uh, I guess I guess each specific genre has very unique things that, like in smaller venues, it's very creative, very um, a lot of energy lifting, spiritually lifting, you know, or escapism, you know, from the real world. You go and listen to music like that; it just gets you into that great groove, man. And what I really loved about that was um, I had said earlier the infusion of all that stuff going on. Even the vocalist, who legitimately was singing his own work obviously is running it through a vocorder it sounded like and they were also using auto-tune but they weren't using auto-tune to tune him they were using auto-tune or some kind of plug-in that, like that to give it that choppy um, in between the note moves you know that kind of a synthy vibe and when it's done great like that it just becomes such a wonderful percussive addition to the arrangement you know all right, so I heard some of you guys said that my mic was a little too uh, low. That's one of those things that on the fly, depending on the volume of uh, the videos, like remember our first one was really low. I make an adjustment there. Sometimes I forget to adjust back. So uh, thank you for letting me know. Obviously, uh, for those of you, all of you know, my YouTube channel where I put this as an archive, I put it there. I always um, drop it into my editing. Uh, facility or my editing software and I'll tweak out a little bit of uh, um, my audio and make sure that it's audible if there are situations like this where it was kind of bleh so <coughs> all right guys let's get ready for another wheel of cheese where's my spoon oh no I don't have my spoon I brought my oh this is bunk no spoonage oh man all right, hang. I, I'm not going on my. I'm not going on without uh, without my spoon. You guys, stand by. Ah! I need spoon. Spoon. <coughs> I need spoon. You guys need spoon.
<coughs> Turn off the air conditioning too. Okay. Now I got a spoon. Oops, sorry. All right. Spoon. I get spoon. I need a <laughs> double A. Great, that's gonna be the latest shirt. <sighs> whoop a -doo. I'm getting down there. Now, let's go ahead and get on this, another wheel of cheese. Oi. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Refresh all data. Hit the blue button. Hit the wheel of cheese. And do this, and I do this. Oh, big wheel of cheese still here, guys. You guys ready for wheel of cheese? <laughs> Let's go. Vote for your favorite uh, color. Uh, for yourself, obviously, you know, get on the team. I'm going to see what happens. Let's go. What do we got? Hi, Kuloa. Kuloa, I believe you are uh, fairly new into our chat, too, as I, as I believe. Let's see what's happening here, Kuloa. Um... Let me do that, remove you. Let me look for you here. Everybody say, how's it to Kuloa? If he's still here, he could have drifted off to watch the game. So let me do this. <clears throat> and Kuloa wanted... Um, oh, another video game, guys. League of Legends. Hey, Kuloa, you won. How's it? Kuloa, are you here in the islands by chance? Are you, or, or have uh, uh, the Palikoko? League of Legends. And let's see which one of this is. This one is Gwen the Hollowed Seamstress. Wow, that sounds pretty. Oh, you are not? Okay. <laughs> Well, Kuloa sounds a little like uh, we got, uh, uh, there's, there's Kuloa here in Hawaii. Okay, so let's do this. This is for you. Uh, League of Legends. How many of you guys know of League of Legends? It's, uh, I know it's a video game. So uh, that's, that's what I know of it. But I have heard some music from it, so we're going to do this together. Are you guys ready? All right. Renaissance three four. transitions with the ambience with the strings and you have the rolling little piano runs in there very emotionally pulling and very mysterious 
B to D da 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 da. Don Quixote just came in for a second. Guest appearance, guitar. Jack Dahl, I'll answer that question in a second. Nice little touch, a little fantasy touch at the end of this track. A little bit of that synth. Uh, somebody had asked me, um, I forgot where it was, uh, Jackdaw, if I could tell if this was a fully studio cut or versus an orchestra. And I, I believe the question is more along the lines is that um, if I could discern the difference between some of the top more orchestral modules that composers use uh, versus uh, uh, live musicians recording in a studio. And I, I think for me, one of the giveaways is, is probably m more because of my years as an engineer <clears throat> and also being an orchestrator and composer myself. Um, there, it, it's, it's getting very, very difficult to discern between the two on whether or not you know, we have live. A lot of times what happens is uh, we have live musicians playing over stems. Uh, in the music world, the stem is, let's say you did a little something on, on a module and it's a really great piece uh, and it sounds really good and let's say I assign it to a viola I might say you know what I want a viola player to double that in the session and then maybe a B or mix it it really depends on the kind of effect you want to get um, there were a couple times where I heard a few things in here where I said oh I just heard that cello just do a really odd jump from here to here in the engineering Sometimes those are some of the things that happen when you're uh, orchestrating or, or composing with modules. Um, but beyond that uh, question, um, this was such a great composed piece that even though much like you, uh, Jack, I, I started to lean in going, is this, could it be? I just started getting into the composition and the arrangement and the truth be told, the technical uh, and the creative and artistic expression the composer uh, utilized was fantastic. It was a little bit of this Baroque kind of vibe at the beginning, kind of, and then the folksiness, the kind of folksiness that kind of jumped in there. I love that little turnaround of nothing but acoustic guitar. So it was very, very creative, and I'm sure that this track, or, or if you, if anybody remembers this track to video gameplay, um, it seemed like it must have been a very complex moment in the game because of the energy would be gliding off, gliding off, smaller arrangements, guitar comes in, a little bit of this, and bring it, you know, so. Um, but I loved it. I love the, I love the intimacy of the composition. That's, the, that's what I wanted to really say. The intimacy of the composition is based on the difference between if you could take that same piece of music and put it in front of 75, 80 musicians, opposed to maybe 25, you know, uh, then you have different miking techniques and stuff, and then the music becomes a lot more intimate and a lot more closer, and there's a little more visceral value to that sometimes. So, anyhow, I hope. Oh man, my chat was paused this whole time. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let me put that link inside if uh, Turnup hadn't. 
Oh, somebody at 1 a.m. just beat me to it. Thanks, 1 a.m. Super mahalo. All right, I'm going to do one more spin, and then I got to get to the donos because the donos are getting out of control, man. There's $5 million in donos waiting here. And uh, so uh, let me hook up with one more spin um, for everybody that's in spin, spin them. I'll refresh all data, copy all. Go over to my wheel of cheese, Spin. Must be fun watching me do all these multitask things. And here we go. New update there. Stand by. Give me a second. I want to just make sure I double did that correctly. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, uh. And, oh my God, there's a lot. Okay, guys, here we go. Are you guys ready for Spin? I don't see Spin. No Spin emojis. Thank you, Zerg, Zagurg, Ivex, Mahalo. I need some more Spin emojis, man. Spin me up. Cycloid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, look. I'm a sneak has a peanut butter jar next to his name. So does double A. All right, let's do this, guys. We are spinning. Uh, Kuloa, once again, thank you so much for that track. I really, really, really dug it. Okay, let's go. Mm -mm -mm. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Mesa Gator. <laughs> All right, Mesa Gator. The big hand for uh, for red too. If you were voting on red, poor blue cheese, <laughs> fatty cakes. Hey guys, if you notice, there's like a jars of peanut butter. I'm pointing like you can know what I'm pointing at next to people's profiles names, and that's because uh, I um, Snake uh, helped me set up like peanut butter squad. Like you, like if you've been a member for two months or one month or a year, and then the color of your peanut butter jar will change or glow differently. So kind of fun. Just want to have fun on here. I leave it up to, to Snake for that kind of stuff because he's much more creative than I am. All right, so let's go see what he wanted. Oh my God, Mason Gator wants something from anime. Uh, the source is Samurai. Wait, whoops, I'm only getting half of that. Stand by, guys. Oops. Oh, shit, I just, I mean, darn, I just hit something. Oh, no, what just happened? Oh, I fully gacked. Stand by for a second, guys. <clears throat> Fully choked on my list here. I didn't destroy it. I just made a mistake. Just up. Oh, it just refreshed right in the middle of my streaming. I mean, what is this on auto refresh? Wait a minute. Where am I? There he is. Okay. Samurai. Okay. Good. Now I can get into it. Stand by. I made a mistake because I'm old. Right here. Okay. Shiki no Uta. Shiki no Uta. <clears throat> Okay, so this is from uh, uh, an anime track, and uh, what a, what a great what I've what I've realized is that there is such a wonderful, super cool crossover between video gamers and anime and stuff like that. I'm sure there's you know some bigger reasons for that that go way 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 back, but I, I even even if anime followers are not so much video gamers, the deep appreciation for the kind of music that comes out of anime production is uh, just as equal as the video games. I think it's uh, without a doubt such an important part of uh, the production and both audiences, anime, video game, seem to have such an appreciation for the music. And as far as I'm concerned, I've heard such an array and such an incredible um, broad swath of genres, you know, in, in uh, anime as well, you know? And uh, so it's, it's a great, it's a great, uh, um, let me do this. There we go. Uh, it's a great source. Anime is a great source for my music listening experience here on the channel. Sorry, that was grim. Let's go. <laughs> hey, what happened? Did I blow it? I blew it. Oh, no. Holy crap. Wait a second. How did that happen? I thought I... Wait a second. 
There it is. Job opening. Ooh, nice. Some brown chicken, brown cow. Interesting use in the drums, choice of sounds. You hear that little meandering muted guitar in the back? Single notes. I love that lonely little sax in the background. But come on, that bass, so. I have to say, the one thing I definitely throw down on right now a little bit is what a trippy choice that they use for that oversaturated um, kind of drum sound. There's a little bit of a saturation on it that's giving it a distortion. And it was like they ran it, they like ran that mix through um, just a send that had a little bit of a, an overdrive, not an overdrive, but a saturation on it to sound like it's clipping a bit, which is really super unique. I think the dichotomy between that sound and the smoothness of everything else really is what makes it step out. At the very beginning, I was thinking uh, the pattern was going to be more like you know, some kind of, you know, Caribbean or calypso -y kind of vibe and everything like that. But as soon as it was, they hit, a, hit me with those drums like that, it definitely took it to another level. But um, yeah, just had to say that. <laughs> Vocal ripping in the back. The free flow in the back, she's doing. to have been the bass player on this one. That little lonely guitar back there with his muted notes. Yeah, 
Ross Bark. It could be how the uploader may have maxed out also as well. That's a good point. You see, now that's another one of the super fun things that I've always said to you guys is like that peel away instead of like, how do you want to end the track? You know, back in the old days, it would be a fade and stuff like that. There was, I, I don't really, I can't recall when I was engineering late seventies through the late eighties, I can't recall ever, ever, ever ending a track by just starting to mute out tracks and let it fade out to one little thing and then out. Then again, I was working on all kinds of music that didn't have that kind of traditional um, uh, or that, that everything was all about fades or big outs. Dun, 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 dun out. <coughs> um, uh, who was it? Magic Spark brought up something that that saturation that I could have been hearing could also be the person who uploaded this could have been peaking and may not have known it. So maybe throw a little bit of the track in of itself into, uh, like something that was called tap set, the uh, tape saturate, fala tape saturation <laughs> mode. But there's no two ways about it. The drums in and of itself definitely had its own saturation within the mix. I mean, that's what it sounded like to me, you know, so. And it's a 20-year-old track, and we don't know if it was transferred off of a cassette tape or a CD and stuff like that. Or if the person had, you know, a regenerated MP3. That's all. There are many different reasons why that sound would happen. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Guys, I'm going to take a quick break and make a cup of coffee, but I'm just going to make a cup of coffee. Uh, because um, that's what I'm going to do. <coughs> and you guys, I'm going to walk over there and make a cup of coffee really quick because I'm out of it. And then when I get back, we've got all these donos that have backed up now, so quite a few of them, so I, I really want to get to it. Wow, somebody put in $250. Oh, no, that's $2.50. I'm sorry. I'm making coffee. I'm making coffee. I'm thinking that I need to get a camera out here. So while I'm making coffee, I mean, like, it's really not that interesting, but. <coughs> I don't even know if you guys can even hear me. I was supposed, oh, hey, Snake, I was supposed to work with you on getting that earbud hooked up. Ah, hang on. That's there. Guys, don't hate me for this. But the magic of life. Right, right. What is it? Can you see it? Uh, no. This is what happens when you get divorced, guys. Live in a smaller place. I think I'll uh, I'll bring in some uh, my pretzels for the next session. <coughs> Almost.
Alright. I need my spoon. My peanut butter spoon to make the do, do the milk thing. Oh, I forgot one more thing. This is my favorite thing to do. I don't know if you guys ever do this, but I will buy seedless grapes, like the, you know, the big red ones. Then I freeze them for like two days. And then they become these like full on iceberg snacks. Er. Ah. Yeah, it wasn't that fun watching me just take a break. At least now, I'm, I, at least I'm more accountable for my breaks, right? Ah. So check this out. So I take the grapes and I freeze them. And then for a couple days, they're like rock hard grapes, but they're nommy nom. Oh, <laughs> before your teeth went to show. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. That sucks. So anyhow, I guess we'll get ready for phase two. Headsets. Is the Super Bowl over yet? Should be over now, right? What, is, is it over yet? Very true, patty cakes. Overtime. Oh, wow. Advertisers will be getting their money's worth today. That's hilarious. If I started tripping balls on the street. <laughs> oh, shit. Love it. Stand by for a second, guys. Have my volume down. Okay. okay just had to check text really quick. All right, guys, we're going to go into uh, our list. Where are my headsets? I don't. Oh, fuck, they were on. Oh, it's happening. I think I might be tripping balls already. <laughs> Oh my god, the headsets were on and I didn't know. I'm, it's over. We're done. I'm roasted. Freaking roasted. All right. Somebody threw the, the juju on me when I started. Who was it? Patty Cakes that said that? Who said that I would be tripping balls? I didn't even. It got, it got into me through osmosis. There's nothing wrong with these. That's freaking hilarious. <laughs> Old man fail. All right. So now we're going to start the process of the donos. So I have quite a few of them here. You guys know how this rolls. I do as many as I can until I can't anymore. And then whatever uh, I can't get to as far as the donos are concerned, get started up on the next stream. Or I might jump in on a Tuesday or Wednesday night for a short, you know, catch up stream like I did last time. I had a good time that one time where I made it, where I did kind of a last second makeup stream on, I think it was a Tuesday or Wednesday night. It was a short one hour stream. I had fun with that. So, TH Flea, TH Flea, guys, I can't talk, something's wrong. THC, TH Flea. Okay. We doing more cheese after this? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw in some more cheese after this. All right, here we go. This is from ah, Double A. Man. All right, here we go. The, the band that we're doing here is Slice the Cake. This is metal. Slice the Cake is metal. I think I've heard one. I don't know if I did it on the Decomposer Lounge or one of my streams here. But uh, I have heard of Slice the Cake. And uh, so let's go ahead. The name of the track is Fractal Exam Sequence. So that sounds pretty badass. So guys, how many of you guys uh, have heard of Slice the Cake? 
Can we get some uh, horns in there? Shakos or some horns? And let's do this for double A. Double A, what have you to say for yourself for suggesting this track? Let's go. And this was metal? Be one of those great starts, huh? and the guitar patterns are great. I love that, infusing some of the dirt there now. The engineering on the drums too. on the leads, man. Oh, geez, here we go. Big shift on the engineering and the drums as well.
I like when they do that with the isolations in the engineering. That was that was absolutely insane, uh, Double A. What an insane journey! I didn't know what to expect because uh, it had been a while, I think, since I'd done a slice the cake. Um, is that what you call it? Slice the cake track. But you know, the more that I go on with these, you know, sessions that we all do together and get introduced to the longer pieces, the kind of pieces of music that are not necessarily cut and made for radio play or first releases, let's say, unless you have such a following that you don't even care about what you know, radio play picks it up or not. So you can go ahead and your first release off an album or a project could be in, you know, an eight minute piece. Um, I was definitely taken for you know, a real super rinse because the first three minutes of the track was all that laid back kind of vibe with the acoustic guitar, even though it kind of gave us little hints of some heaviness you know, in their uh, composition or in the choice of tones in the arrangements. Until this last second, uh, this last um, uh, part came in the last three minutes. From what I recall, there was a definite shift in engineering techniques, you know, without a doubt, in tones of guitar. So, like, it, there's a potential that, you know, the front side of the, of the track was recorded. You know, say you've got, uh, let's say, 25 tracks going on there. And then in preparation for the next track, you know, uh, the drums are still mic'd up, everything, and then hit record with a new set of tones and stuff that cross over because a lot of things changed uh, tonally. But as a piece of artwork, as a, as a piece of music all the way across, it was very theater of the mind and very telling of the types of talent that is within this band. Uh, I was reading something here on, on the thing. It's, is it three members? Is, it just, is this just three members? Um, this, this, what it says here on the thumbnail is uh, everything on other... Wait... Everything on other sliced sounds of perfection, from the drums to the guitars to the excellent vocal performances, all three members are as gifted as they come. Um, so if that's the case, then if it is three members, then it's just even more mind-numbing and bone-crushing. However, obviously, a lot of overdubs going on there. Uh, it doesn't matter. As a piece of work, uh, it was really mental, and I fully dug it, and it was a hell of a journey, just like you said, double A. So, um, yeah, <laughs> thank you for that so much. I really appreciate that. All right, next one. Who just jumped in? Centron Cat. God. Uh, Centron Track. Uh, I can't talk. These things are starting to kick in. Maybe I should stop eating them. Who knows what I'm going to sound like in an hour, right? Um, Centron Cat. I just caught. You're done, though. Thank you so much. And, um, but I have a funny feeling uh, every time you've come to bat, I've always had one of these, whoa, experiences, eye-opening. And I'm sure that this will continue. Centron Cat wants me to check out a band, uh, Kaneko Ayano. Uh, Kaneko? Maybe it's Kaneko. Kaneko Ayano. And forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. It's country? This is country? 
Oh, <laughs> oh no, did you really? <laughs> I can refund some of that for you, no problem. Um, so is this a country track? So I'm, I'm curious to hear what this sounds like. So hang on. Um, let me get to the bottom of this list. I got to, there's always a little thing I got to do here, unfortunately, because my browser's too small. Uh, and the name of the song is Hikari no Ho. I'm going to try this. <coughs> Hikari no o Hoyu. Hoyu. I think I got as close as I possibly am going to get. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see here. Oh, for a feel good day, everybody in the chat. Um, if you feel miserable, depressed, and avoid humanity, you remember the days that felt their best. Oh, this is nice. He's. He's left us a nice little message in here, and uh, so uh, he's sending us very good vibes, even if you're having a shitty day. So here, here we go. Let me copy this. Let me copy this, and I copy this. And Suntron Cat, we're doing this. All right. I love the guy with the mohawk with the bass. God, these guitar tones are wonderful. Vibrato's uh, sling with the guitar. Great production. Excellent production. I really love uh, the meekness of her voice. Really is what's making this work for me. Uh, the musicianship's great. The tones are fantastic. But, you know, the, authentic the authenticity and the meekness of her performance it makes it real. There's a connection there that I could see. <clears throat> it looks here, it's like almost 3 million views, you know? And the song, it would, would seem to be like, oh, this is a simple, fun little song. But there's just something about her voice and the meekness of it and how she's performing it. I, I don't know what she's saying, but um, that sells it for me. Like, this, this can make it on a lot of people's playlists, you know, on a, on a get up and go day. Organic would be better work, right? Even her strumming pattern on the guitar, really nice. Doubling that with the vocals. I like that. <laughs> I love that. That is such a great 
sound in his guitar playing. <laughs> I guess that was a live take. It really, it really sounded good. And I, what is he gonna do? Yeah, no, maybe. Anything else happening there? And cut. <laughs> um. Uh, Silco, what was the, um, how did you come about this song? Uh, whereabouts in your playlist or, or did this, you know, make that kind of an impact? It is such a, like, it's one of those, like, dry, you're, you need to be in a good mood. You're, you're driving, good mood, you're driving down, and you just want to turn this on just to get, just to get that full kind of chill joy that was, you know, being expressed there with the vocals and everything. Once again, I don't know what it's saying. It could be like a full axe murderer song. I'd have no idea. But the melody was really nice, was really catchy, and the supporting arrangements to the hook was also really super catchy. If you like, sorry, if you like the track, 1AM just posted it there for you on the um, um, uh, chat. But I thought, it, I, 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 I just automatically am just in, a, in that super cool laid back sporty mood, just kind of, hey, hey, hey. You know, very authentic, you know, so that that was killer. But Silco, thank you so much for that, man. That was fantastic. And thank you. <laughs> I think I owe you another song, too. We'll work on that in a little bit. All right. Next up, Senor Rui. How are you? This one comes from a movie. Arcane, I guess was the name of a movie. And... Um, so we're doing yours next, Signori. Are you here still, Signori? There he is. From the show Arcane, a phenomenal show based on the game League of Legends. Oh, oh, okay. Um, was League of Legends, um, is that a um, video game that um, I just... Was Riot involved in that? I don't know where I'm... I'm like it's telepathically something's coming in my head about that. But, um, oh, <laughs> I wonder if the rest of their games are going to sound that good. Uh, I heard somebody, yeah, somebody made a comment about because of all the riot layoffs, you know, <clears throat> what would happen, you know, in production and stuff. And that's the one thing about the music. It, it'll take, I don't know, I don't really know what it takes to make a video game, but let's say it takes 150 people making a video game. It only takes one composer to do the music. So, you know, um, but usually the composer makes a good chunk of cheese, so it's kind of an offsetting thing. It's too bad to hear about the layoffs. That and also the layoffs in Microsoft gaming division as well. And there was a couple of other ones. I don't know, the whole techie layoff thing is just mind-numbing to me. And it's mind-numbing because it's a new normal in our society. How about that? I think the sad thing about all these layoffs is that the CEOs and all these companies are not even being, they're not even trying to shadow box. They're just trying to say, Psh, you know, this, you want to play in the world? This is what the world's like. This is what we do now. You know, it doesn't make anybody feel really comfortable. You feel a little dispensable, obviously. And you can't sit there and say, I've made it here, so now I think I'm going to buy that dream house or maybe upgrade my car a little bit because then all of a sudden, six months later, you're just like out, you know? So it's, um, it's tough if, if that's the new normal. It's, it's uh, sucky fudgy, you know, for the future. Anyhow, whoops, I just went on a rant. Let me not go on my rant. Let me go to the... <laughs> Let me go to the music. We're here for music, not ranty. So... Yeah, right, Amon? All right, here we go. Let me cancel this really quick. Signori, this is your suggestion. Let's do this. All right. I am the monster you created. Oh shit, right there, I love it already. You ripped out all my parts. Worst of all, 
for me to live. I gotta kill the part of me that saw. Ooh, what a lyric. And I needed you more. Who's singing this? I hope you know we had everything. I just got chicken skin. And you broke me and left these pieces. It says sticking right in I front of me. I hurt like you hurt me today. And I want you to lose like I lose when I play what could have been. Oh, the stereo imaging when the strings come up. Ugh. That's wonderful. Dancing ostinato back there. A fallen angel. You ripped out all my parts. I couldn't care what invention you made me. Cause I, I was meant to be yours. This has a little bit of the Como de la Sol feel. The album he did about 20 years ago. Oh, beautiful strings. Something's coming. <laughs> Beautiful bowing technique there. Was that it? Uh, that was, without a doubt, one of the most beautiful tracks I've heard in a very long time. Of course, not surprising coming from Sting. I mean, it was right there. I don't know why he wasn't putting it together. Um, what? One of the things that is extraordinary to me in the journey that Sting has been on his melodies and everything are just so, so powerfully unique. But his ability to wrap his melodies so wonderfully uh, with the richness of other instruments, cultural instruments, or even string sections and stuff like that, to bring on the soul-pulling uh, stereo imaging kind of moments in the song, these, you know, dynamics, you know, as mostly it's known for, known for. But the one thing I will say about this track that I have not heard, you know, I, I love Sting and The Police and I've followed the journey pretty much, but I haven't really listened to a lot of more later Sting stuff. <coughs> well, excuse me. But the one thing that is very obvious to me was the engineering, um, was the embracing of the rolling off of the very high end of, of course, the piano. We've heard the piano, that muted kind of soft piano sound. It's a little more kind of mushy mallet, uh, uh, the hammers being on the soft pedal or something. It's not a lot of high end. There isn't a lot of pop and a lot of high end to it. So it's, uh, I, I, I have become accustomed to aligning that sound was something very emotional. Just like my last project I just released, Stop the Monkey Mind, on my um, uh, Tranquil Sounds, or not on Tranquil, I'm sorry, on the RPG's um, music channel. 
you know, with the little girl looking at it. If you listen to the pianos that I use there, we're also that very soft muted sound because it just delivers a different kind of vibe into here. But what was more amazing to me about this is that they use the same technique on Sting's vocals. Um, or it sounds like it would be. Sting usually has a very wonderful, very well-recognized little sizzle in his voice. And, you know, he's been able to maintain that through his career. But in this particular track, that high end seemed to have been just rolled off a bit so that the emphasis was on the more uh, middle tones, you know, in, in, in his performance. And then, of course, the background vocals that he arranged on that are also just as stunning. The guy is just a, a legend in creating um, um, images with his music, even if you never saw any music video. And it could be all the way back even from the police days, but more so his solo projects. You just listen to it, and it automatically releases any kung fu block on your brain if you've had a shitty day or something and just take you into another universe without, you know, drinking or drugs or anything like that. You just listen to a track like that. Now, of course, if you want to enhance it with that, it's up to you, but what a great track. What a great track. And I, I can't thank you enough for, uh, um, for having me listen to this. It, um, Senori, I told you, you could bring me something that's uh, going to floor my shit. So that's what it was. Yeah, a low pass. <coughs> um, I'm on here. Amon, you seem like you're in the business. See, there's an engineer, musician, all of the above and everything, so we have the same kind of back and forth. But yeah, these low-pass roll-offs, if you're an engineer, it does something to the shape of your uh, engineering experience in the GUI where it automatically will scoop off. You can do it from the back end or the front end, and then you can kind of m maneuver it around a little bit until you find that sweet spot that you want. And uh, many other things in that technique as well, but, um, but yeah.